Hello students, welcome to today's session. I hope you've been fine and you've been following this topic very well. Uh, today we'll be looking at the uses of a CRO and by the end of the session you should be in a position to explain the two uses of a CRO and also do a few calculations on the same. That is, should be in a position to solve a few problems concerning the uses of a CRO. We have two uses of a CRO and one, we use the CRO as a voltimeter and we also use the CRO to determine the frequency of an alternating current. We'll go straight to the first one, that is using the CRO as a voltimeter. There are three things that you need to do for this CRO to be used as a voltimeter. The first thing is that we should switch off the time base and then we add the X plates. We switch off the time base and then we add the X plates. The second thing is that we now need to connect the voltage to be measured across the Y plates. Therefore, the voltage to be measured is uh, connected across the Y input. And finally, we need to set the Y gain sensitivity. That is, remember we found the Y sensitivity is set in voltage per division. Then, finally, we need to check how many displacement have been caused by this voltage. Then, when we talk of, for example, the sensitivity is 3 volts per division, and then we connect our voltage and it moves vertically in the screen through 2.5 divisions. For every division, 3 volts. The second division, that will be 3 times 2. Therefore, our voltage will simply be the displacement times the sensitivity. A very simple example here, the displacement is 2.5 divisions. Our sensitivity is set at 3 volts per division and therefore our voltage will be 2.5, that is the number of divisions, multiplied by the sensitivity, that will be 7.5 volts. Remember we said in physics, any quantity that has units, then you must always attach the SI units of that quantity, 7.5 volts. Please note, in case we've connected an AC, then it will displace, if this is our zero volt level, then it will be displaced on the upper side and also on the lower side. But if it is a DC, then we'll just have the dot moving up to a certain point. So in a DC, we'll see the dots somewhere displaced, but in AC, we'll see a line on the screen. And from the zero point level, we'll have the line on the upper side with the same units on the lower side. So if this were 2.5, then on the other side, we'll be having 2.5. We look at that when we look at more examples on these calculations. We also need to look at why use the CRO as a voltimeter? What are the advantages of using this CRO as a voltimeter compared to using the conventional meters that we have? We've seen that we use the voltimeter in the lab to measure the voltage maybe across certain devices when we are working with the dry cells, so on and so forth. So what are the advantages of CRO over the conventional meters? The first is that the CRO does not take up any current from the circuit. And the simple reason why it doesn't take up any uh, current from the circuit is because the CRO has infinite resistance. Infinite in that it has a very high resistance. If you recall, when you looked at how we use a voltimeter, we noticed that 
when we are using a voltmeter, if for example, this is a device, a resistor, and I want to know the voltage across this load, then we connect the voltmeter parallel to that device or across that device. That device. Simply because the voltmeter has high resistance. But you notice that, however, as this current flows, when it gets to the junction, current will always take the path with the lower resistance. But still some little current will flow through the path with high resistance. So the resistance of the voltmeter is not big enough to block all the current, not to flow through it. But in case of a CRO, then it blocks, the resistance is so high, there is no current it will take up from the circuit. The other advantage is that the CRO can measure both alternating current and direct current. Most conventional voltmeters, they will only measure the direct current. The third advantage is that the CRO responds instantaneously. When you look at the, how a voltmeter functions, remember the voltmeter operates on the mechanism of a conductor carrying current experiencing a force when it is placed in a magnetic field. And therefore, if this is the voltmeter, when we have the pointer, then when we switch on the circuit, this pointer experiences a force, and if it was to read three, you'll find that the voltmeter keeps on shaking momentarily before it settles on the reading that you are going to take. Therefore, the voltmeter is not instant. You'll not find a situation where the pointer just goes direct to three. It will move and it will just shake. And this happens even with the digital voltmeters. You'll always find them shifting between or around the actual value. But for the CRO, then it responds instantly. Finally, the CRO can measure very large voltages. We've seen in the lab, for example, the voltmeters we have there. Uh, they measure maybe up to 5 volts. We still have large uh, vol voltmeters that can measure voltages higher than 5. But when you talk of voltmeters to measure a voltage of 30,000 volts, then in that case, we'll need a CRO. It will measure very large voltages without getting damaged. So the second use of a CRO is using the CRO to determine the frequency of an alternating current. And for the CRO to be used to determine this frequency, then the current is connected through the wire plates. We connect the signal through the wire plates, just like we did uh, when we were determining the voltage. Still, the input was through the wire plates. The difference is, when we were determining the voltage, we switched off the time base and we add the X plates. But this time around, we are going to switch on the time base. Uh, the time base is switched on. That is, we have the time base on. We switch on the time base. And by so doing, we notice that when we have the wire plates and the time base switched on, then on the screen, what we get is a wave. So we set the time base such that we only produce one wave or one oscillation. 
the time base is set such that we only produce one wave on the screen. Depending on the time base setting, from this one wave, we look at, or it will help us to determine the periodic time. So the next thing is to determine the periodic time, which is T. And we know from waves 1 that frequency is given by the reciprocal of the periodic time. And therefore, we'll be able to determine the frequency of our alternating current from the periodic time. Remember, the time base is set in time per division. Therefore, we'll only need to calculate how many divisions have been covered by this one wave. Then, if we know the time for one division, then we'll know the time taken to complete this one wave. And time to complete one wave is the periodic time and when we have the periodic time which should be calculated in seconds then we'll be able to determine the frequency which will be the reciprocal of the periodic time remember the periodic time should be in seconds and then when we calculate our frequency the si units of frequency is hertz so for example uh, we want to determine the frequency of an alternating current given that the time base is set at 10 milliseconds per division. We can see the time base has been set to produce just one wave. So the first thing we need to check is do we have that one complete oscillation? Yes, it is there. We have one complete wave. So how many divisions has it covered? It has covered one, two, three, four divisions. Therefore, the divisions covered are four. So what time has it taken to cover that one wave? The time base is set at 10 milliseconds per division and therefore our periodic time will be 10 times 4 which will be 40 milliseconds. Then we need now to get this periodic time in seconds and therefore 1 second is equivalent to 1000 milliseconds. Therefore we take 40, we divide by 1000. And this will give us 0 0.04 seconds. Then our frequency will be 1 over 0 0.04. Which will give us, uh, this is 100 over 4, which will give us 25 hertz. And therefore the frequency of this AC signal is 25 hertz. In the next session, we'll be looking at more examples on the calculations of determining both the voltage and also the frequency of an AC. Thank you.